to your hands on gaming episode five. I'm one of your hosts, Daz. And with me, as always, my friend, Brendan. How are you, mates? Pretty good. And you? Good, good. Yeah, we're b- back in lockdown here in Melbourne. So, hey, that means more games for me. Good times. <laughs> good times. <laughs> hey, you know, when, when someone gives you lemons, you got to make lemonade, hey? What do you do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you've been well? Yeah, pretty good. Just playing a lot of playing a lot of arcade games as usual on my retro pa. Nice uh, man. Nice. Got man. a got a, got an Xbox Series S the other day. Finally, oh, okay. I I couldn't get the X. It's like impossible to get over here right now. Mm-hmm. So I got that for the meantime, having some fun. Played Microsoft Flight Simulator. Crashed into everything. <laughs> awesome times. <laughs> I'm gonna install that actually. I really yeah do. yeah. How quiet is the Series S? It's ridiculous. My son has one. Oh, I, I, yeah, I know. I had to like double check it was on the other day. I was like, because my Xbox One used to be pretty loud. Yeah, they're loud. Like yeah. you, you, like you could hear it, but this thing, like you can't even hear like mm. anything. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But you know, you know who is loud? Our first guest. <laughs> we have Kingy. Kingy's back from um, Arcade Perfect as well. <laughs> it was the Kingy from RGDS. How you doing, mate? Gentlemen. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you. <laughs> You're our first guest. Wow. There you I'm go. honored. There you Very go. Honored. Guest. Yeah. And I read on um, Twitter today that I've got to sit inside a cardboard box for the sake of. Listener Gary Arnett, so yeah. I'll just speak like that <laughs> all day. So, <laughs> no, it's good. It's good to join you guys. Thanks for inviting me in here. Thank, thanks for staying up so yeah. late. Yeah. yeah, way past my bedside. Yeah, way it is. Past. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, thanks great. a lot. Yeah, so yeah, this is cool. So what we've got? We've got Canada, Scotland, and Australia. So yeah, time zones are all over the place here. But wow. we 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 do it for the love of podcasting, hey. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, the game that was chosen for this episode was a Cybernoid. So, I'm quite happy about that. Because uh, I've been a fan of this you game. Were, <laughs> yeah, I was very happy. You, you, were, you were lobbing that on Twitter. Uh, oh, <laughs> like mate, crazy. I was pushing this everywhere. I was like, please, people, please. What were, what were the alternatives again? I'm trying to remember what the other options were. Uh, Beach, were Beachhead 2? Beachhead 2. Beachhead 2. Yeah, that's right. Uh, mm. I can't remember. Put you in a spot there, didn't I? You <laughs> did, you did. So, <laughs> so we, Do you we, even remember the other games? <laughs> I can't remember which ones I <laughs> See, exactly, because you had your mind, you knew this was going to be the game. Oh, I, I was hoping. Oh, I was hoping. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Let's let's have a look, because I can't remember. Jeez, we were old buggers, mate. It wasn't even that long ago we put it up. <laughs> just, just okay, last week. all right. Cybernoid, Beachhead Two, Drakenus, and Bop and Rumble. So well, that's some good you ones. Know what? The, the right game was chosen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, Beachhead Two would have been great too. I have oh, to, a I decent game. Been. I would have good fun. I would have just spent all day sampling the sounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, mm. so so it was Cybernoid, and um, me personally, um, I only played the C sixty four version most of my life. I didn't play the others, so um, oh, and I played a little bit of the Nest. So um, this this was good for me. I was quite surprised with with a lot of the ports. What about you guys? Were you familiar with any other any other ports or certain ports? Ports. Everyone's a port that's not the Spectrum version, my friend, because oh, that was man. the original version, so just get your facts right. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Oh. Yeah, that's the original version. Uh. <laughs> yeah, played most, played all of the 8 bits back in the day, and um, yes, I delved into the 16 bits um, when they came out, when, when I got my hands on the system. More on them later, though. Okay, cool. Are you, Brendan? Yeah, I just... Uh... I only played the C64 version back in the day because, you know, I never had a Spectrum or Amstrad, so... But, yeah, I really, 
Really loved it. Uh, I hadn't played the 16-bit ones, though. <laughs> and, you know, well, I wish we hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, firstly, yeah. well, yeah, Cybernoid was released back in 1987 by Raphael Kiko. Was it Kiko? Kiko. Kiko. I already forgot. Kiko. <laughs> <laughs> Music by Jerome Tell on the C64, obviously. <laughs> right. Go on. Yeah. Dave Rogers on the Spectrum. <laughs> What's that? Uh, yes, I know. Dave Rogers on the Spectrum, yes. the original version, the original composer. Come yes, on. yes, Dave <laughs> Rogers on the Spectrum and Amstrad. And uh, Chochen Hippel on the ST. I didn't even know it was music. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, so, yeah, this is back in 1987. Uh, first port was, was the ZX, uh, ZX Spectrum version? The, first, the original version was for the ZX Spectrum, yeah. yeah. Yep. And, again, that was back in 1987. Now, the game works as, like, uh, it's it's a flip-screen game. And you start off uh, in a, you could say, in a, the first the first screen is, like, there's this volcano thing, and you freak out because you think you're going to get killed because it's just spewing crap out of the <laughs> out of the screen. Remember, it's just, just there for effect. So, um, so yeah, you, you just got to get to the end of the level. You, you get power-ups. You can change. You can um, switch uh, wep- secondary weapons. You've got, you've got your normal gun. A secondary weapons like a like a, a shield which is not a weapon <laughs> a bomb a seeker um <clears throat> is it missiles bouncing as well balls. Oh, bouncing, bouncing balls, balls. bouncy balls yeah which yeah. come in handy they're quite good that's one of my favorite weapons yeah. to be honest yeah um and you really do need to use all those secondary weapons to get through yeah. which yeah. back in the day i didn't know they existed <laughs> i thought it was just the missile that was it. <laughs> well, I, I, I had a copy from Dodgy Dave, so I didn't know. I was going to say that you've had a pilot yeah. copy. Yeah, 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 I didn't know. <laughs> and, and I didn't know that for a while either. It's crazy. <laughs> like, originally back in the day until I started pressing all the keys on the keyboard, you know, because I never had the instructions and I found like, yeah. the secondary weapons. I was like, whoa. Ooh. It changed the game completely because Mind I was... blown. Yeah, because yeah. I was just so used to just just using the missile and and i'm amazed i got as far as i did back in the day in the c64 just using that but um yeah some of these versions you really need to use all those all those secondary weapons um and then yeah, it was actually later uh, ported to the the ness which is um houston did not not that often i think they they also did um nebulous as well yes that's right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so but yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just a flip screen game. It's a shooter. Um, I will, I'll talk about scores later in the magazines. But uh, and there was also a sequel. And uh, yeah, no, Houston, this is one of Houston's. Uh, Houston were I reckon were great in the early days. So it's it's hard it's hard to beat their stuff. I mean, their eight bit versions of Houston games are, are top notch. Personally, I think they're great. And um, yeah. but anyway. I think that's enough of me rambling on. I reckon uh, we start on reviewing. Which which version should we start first? And who would like to go first? Well, we I think see. probably then if the original version was the Spectrum version, isn't that the best well, place okay. to go? The origin, the origin. Okay. All yeah. right, cool. We'll do that. I reckon, I reckon maybe then uh, myself or Brendan should start with that because you're probably the most familiar with it, can you? So yeah, I'd yeah. like to hear your your opinion probably last, I think. Uh, Brendan, yeah, would no you like problem, to go guys. first with the Spicky? Yeah, sure. Right, okay, so right. for this for the Spectrum version, I played the 120AK version. So yep. as soon as I loaded it up, the uh, I was actually pretty surprised with the music. And I'm just, I just say that because I usually play, you know, when you play Spectrum games, you just usually that horrible, horrible drone <laughs> happening there <laughs> so the, mu- the music the music was actually pretty good i was pleasantly surprised uh, we, uh he yeah. wants to hear it we'll hear that hey yeah 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 that's rocking awesome. man. <laughs> I mean, that's really yeah, really it's nice like, it's like super bubbly it's super yep. fun it really gets you in the mood straight away um, I thought the graphics were really good. They really well defined. Um, I just loved the look of it. Mm-hmm. Um, the colors, the color scheme was also good. 
uh, you know, I didn't notice a lot of, I didn't notice any really like color clash, you know, like the usual, mm. <laughs> sometimes it's the uh, spectrum games. It can get so hectic. You can't even see what's going on. Um, it played well, very accurate. Uh, the controls, you know, I just, everything was pretty pinpoint. Um, I found a, I found a, something that happened. This is not just the spectrum version. Uh, this is like kind of all the versions, but, um, you can get yourself stuck in these games if you run out of certain uh, mm -hmm. uh, secondary weapons. Um, yeah. uh, you know, like if you don't have the, the bouncing balls or something to shoot through a certain area, you kind of screwed. And uh, yeah. that's kind of a common thing on all the versions, though. So it's not really just a Spectrum thing. But I just noticed it when I was playing that one for whatever reason. Also, uh, I didn't notice any slowdown either. Um, there's there's oh, a, there's okay. another eight there's there's another eight bit version which I found has a massive amount of like slowdown and stuff. Uh, the Spectrum I didn't find like much issue there. I mean, there might have been a little bit, but it wasn't like you know, yeah. it wasn't like overwhelming like to where it affected gameplay. So um, personally, I thought it was really good. I think it's a really great eight bit version i mean it's the original i guess so it's uh yeah it's a good game i like it yeah i agree i mean thankfully we had a really great version to start off with for other versions to work off so yeah it's great look uh cool intro music again um and same in game that that ay chip is uh, i think pushed a bit there and i think it sounds amazing uh great controls uh pixel perfect hit detection um mm -hmm. there's no room for error at all but i think that's probably most versions of oh, some uh just a gorgeous high-res graphics um i see i found a bit of slowdown in there a little bit um when there was mm -hmm. lots happening like there had to be a lot of stuff going on but it didn't hinder gameplay i actually think it it's a bit charming does that what does that make sense like you, you know, I love it, slowdown. <clears throat> it's always charming for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in certain games, <laughs> like like for, like like I know we're going off topic here, but like Double Dragon, the slowdown. If you don't have yeah. that slowdown in that game, the game doesn't it's feel like Double same. Dragon. It's just nah. it's too fast. <laughs> but uh, okay, we'll go back to Cybernoid. Uh, <laughs> look, I got used to this version quite quickly because I was, I'm so used to the C64 one, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, Solid game. It's it's great. I was um. I was just very impressed. Houston really do a good job on the eight bits. They really, really do, and um, I, I just love it. Yeah. Just yeah, solid, mate. I, I, you know, if if I was scoring this on its on its own merit, I'd say nine out of ten. I was mean, I don't really score versions, but I was really impressed. It's great. Mm. It's it's. I loved it. So yeah, yeah. awesome, guys. I'm glad both of you have felt this way towards this version. I mean, I was like. Uh, a day one purchaser of this back in the day when it first came out and I played this within an inch of its life. I was blown away with its visuals and um, the gameplay. Like like all these guys say, it's tight gameplay, it's pixel perfect, does, you, you've nailed it. Um, you're right, there is a little bit of slowdown when it gets extremely busy but nothing that detracts from the game, you know. Um, but the, the visuals, the music, the the, the level design, and that goes for all of the games mm -hmm. because the level design is pretty much the same, give or take a few differences on, on, mm -hmm. on, on all the screens. It's yeah. the same game on all, all the systems. It, it is a fantastic game, and to see this as a, a new, fresh game coming out for any of our systems back in the day, albeit if it's a port or whatever, there was nothing really like it, was there? You know, it, was, it, it felt oh. unique because it is yeah. a shoot 'em up. Yes, but it's not a scrolling shoot 'em up. It's not vertical. It's not horizontal. Mm -hmm. It's a, a flat screen shoot 'em up, which yeah. is a bit strange. It's and very, you know, you never never seen anything like but that. But it works. It yeah. works. Yeah, it does. It mm. does work, work. And I think that's like what you said, and you touched on Brandon there. That the the Brendan, sorry, Brandon, sorry, Brendan. Um, <laughs> the the where you can just screw up the game because you've used all of the smart weapons. That's part yeah. of it. There's many a games like that back in the day. They didn't really <laughs> think it out. You know, it's sure, part yeah. of that 80s charm, isn't it? That, yeah. You know, you, you say, oh, bugger. But you blame yourself for being overzealous with the, the bouncing balls. I'm going to use them all when it's yeah. screen past it, you know. <laughs> Damn you, I'm using them all. Um, because it's a bit of luck of the draw. You know where some of the exits 
there might be square blocks that block the way and you yeah. disperse the bouncing balls. Well, it's lucky the draw of the bounce off the, the barriers and the pirate ships that are there. <laughs> the the balls bounce and disperse in different directions, therefore you've not cleared the blocks. And you can maybe use four or five goes of it before you clear the pathway mm. and all of a sudden you've used them all up. And yeah, that, yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. But that, the charm is there in that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad... I'm glad you guys are impressed with this this version and the the tune is is, is iconic. You know, it's one of the the best Spectrum A A Y tunes out there for for the system. I I would argue. I think it's incredible. I love it. It's great. It is great. Yes. I mean, it, yeah. it, fantastic. It just shows if you know you get the right person behind a sound chip or anything, you can get mm -hmm. you can get a, you know a great result. Yeah. So yeah, go. another thing yeah. I noticed. Another another thing I noticed about uh, the game. I mean, I haven't played this game since the '80s on my C64, so I hadn't like really gone back to it. But when I was playing it, like over the last week or so, like all the different versions, I kind of uh, the game. I know it's a shoot 'em up, but it also it also feels like a puzzle game to me. Like each each screen you go into, like you can tackle it in like a couple different ways mm. and it makes it makes quite like a hell of a lot of difference like how you decide to attack each like you know each little like screen the situation yeah. so it it yeah. almost has like a puzzle element like you if you 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 definitely got to choose the right uh, secondary weapon straight off the bat as soon as you get onto that screen yeah. and and go with it and then figure out the puzzle quickly because i mean obviously you're on a timer which is something i've never liked in games but uh yeah it, it's it's definitely got a weird puzzle element to it as well yeah you, you got a point there i never thought of it that way yeah yeah because there's there's a certain tech or you can say even, even a path you could say within one level that will get you to the end and others will just be like you know you can go in kamikaze and keep dying <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah, yeah, yeah. no you, you got a point there i never thought of it that way that's very true all right cool all right, uh we'll go amstrad i think next uh I'll, I'll start i'll start with the amstrad um you know houston i was thinking okay this is gonna be good as well i think look uh colorful graphics um yeah, sorry, and I'm gonna to have to go back a little bit. I just found that every version looks different besides the 16 bits, and I like that. They've got their mm. own little uh, look to them. Uh, anyway, so yeah, Amstrad colorful graphics, good controls. Uh, I found no slowdown, which is funny. <laughs> That's strange. I played this on real hardware. Um, what really annoyed me, like this annoyed me. This is this it loses points for this. I found the bounce the bounce bullets over the balls look the same as the enemy fire, and it gets very very confusing, and mm -hmm. that 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 ruins a lot of the game. I think um, when and this was even worse uh, when using the shield, there was no way knowing it was activated. I mean, I mean, you can look at the number if it counts down, but you don't know how long it's got, or you're not flashing. There's nothing to to say that it's on, which I think is uh. Mm -hmm. Is it's really really bad. I mean that that really wrecks it a lot. The game, uh, the gameplay, um, spot on hit detection. I think difficulty was fair. I think it was one of the easier easier ports uh, overall. Um, the great version. It was still very enjoyable and playable. It was. It's probably not the one I would go back to, but it, it was good. It was good. I think if you had it back in the day, you wouldn't complain. You'd you'd, you'd be quite happy with it. Um, and I'll say the music. pretty much the same with but this has got like a high pitch squeal for some reason so no, the and it's in stereo well oh there you go yeah i still prefer the specky version though to be honest yeah it's just yeah. more yeah, full definitely but yeah, yeah. yeah oh, look over, overall overall it was it was fun it was fun without you know there's there's a few there's a couple of things there that that did irk me which i thought were i think could have could have been thought out a bit better when they were doing the game. You know, they could have fixed it, but oh well. It's still written by the same author. It's Raphael Checo that done it for the Amstrad as well, cause, because okay. you're pretty much writing for the, the, the same programming language, give or take a few changes. 
for for the processor and that um, it is the original game's author. Oh, okay, well, there you go. Cool. Cool. Uh, Trivia. All right, we'll go. <laughs> all right, we'll go. Go, um, go, Kingy. We'll mix it up. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the same um, with you. I mean, one, yes, it's wonderful that it's not just one of these sloppy ports for the Spectrum that's just been directly, you know, mapped across like we've seen with many games, mm-hmm. and it's hindered mm-hmm. by. Well, slow down. <laughs> ironically, slow down. The game yeah. is still hindered by slow down. Yeah, but yeah. At least in its <laughs> at least in its own right this time round. <laughs> um, graphically, though, I I do think it's, it it looks like an Amstrad game. That that's good. It plays to the strengths of that the the graphical palette of the Amstrad, um, but the slow down is what spoils the game more than anything else. It's just. Especially in very busy sections where there's lots of, you know, um, swarming bad guys. There's the the bigger things that you need to destroy, like these weird hive looking things, and such like all the volcanoes spewing the the rocks out. That that really just cripples the gameplay and just makes it just that little bit less enjoyable, if you know what I mean. But yeah. it still is quite a tight game, and 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 the screens that are fast. You know, it's, it's still accurate. It still has a fluidity to it. And it's still enjoyable. And if I had it on Amsterdam back in the day, I would probably very much doubt I'd notice the slow. We never really did notice the slowdown back in the day, did we? We, we just no. accepted that was a thing. No. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. So retrospectively, I would have been very proud of that if I was a an Amstrad owner back in the day. A nice one. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. So for me. So for me, the uh, yeah, I liked it overall. It's a lot of things that you guys have said. Um, I don't think the the music is still pretty good. It's not a it's not a patch on the Spectrum version. That just that that bubbliness of the Spectrum one just is just so much better. It's still it's still pretty decent though. Um, I did like the fact that it had uh, sound effects and music playing at the same time when when you were playing the game. Um, there's a certain other version we'll get to which doesn't have sound effects, but anyway, <laughs> um, overall the uh, the graphics I thought were really nice, well animated. They definitely like like you guys said, play to the uh, Amstrad strengths, especially color wise. Yeah. It looks really really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest problem, just like you guys have said as well, uh, slow down. It can get really really hectic, especially when there's a you know, when it has those rushes of ships that come onto the screen and you can collect all the power-ups, those sequences especially, it, the slowdown is just pretty hectic. It's, it definitely affects the game gameplay. And it's just, like, it makes it not as much fun. Um, I also noticed that this is obviously just uh, based on hardware, I guess, um, different systems, different looks, different styles, but those big alien tentacle creature things that you see everywhere, they were extremely small on screen compared to, like, um, say, the C64 version where they were massive. So it kind of, like, it they, they looked really small when you went into, like, a certain stage, like a certain screen, and it looked like, you know, the screen wasn't filled out enough. It was just, like, this tiny little thing in the corner, another one up in the other corner. It just didn't... Uh, you know, I, I know it's just, uh, you know, sprites and hardware based, so, but it definitely looked, you know, it looked different from me playing the C64 version so much. It just seemed a little bit odd, but uh, overall, I think it's good. Yeah, I mean, if you had it back in the day, you'd be very happy as an Amstrad owner, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, well, it's, yeah, I totally agree. So, okay. Well, well, let's go to the C64, eh? Yeah. Brendan, you go first. You go first. Your <laughs> turn to go first. Okay, so C64. So this was obviously the one that I originally played first. Um, the only one I actually played <laughs> until yeah. recently. And uh, so I love this game as when I loaded it up back in the day. I mean, I obviously I had a bootleg, so I didn't have the instructions. So I had, like like I said earlier, I had to mash the keyboard a whole, all over the place to try and figure <laughs> out if there was anything else secondary in the game until you find, like, you know, secondary weapons. But, uh, yeah, as soon as you load that thing up and that uh, Jerome Tell music just pumps in, man, it's yep. just like... This music, It's hey? amazing. That's so good. Oh, yeah. It's so good. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, Kingy, that just wipes the floor off with the, <laughs> with the ZX Spectrum version. I don't care. You can roll your eyes as much as you like. <laughs> Yeah, that music is just yeah, amazing. and he's he's on mute. He's talking, and we can't hear him. Oh, I hear. strongly disagree, actually. Oh, but I'll get to my point. Oh, when I, uh, I'll, I'll prove right. the point on that in a minute. All right, okay, okay. 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 Point when I get to well, my anyway, talk. yeah, uh, I absolutely love that tune. Um, pumps, just, you know, it's pumps. it just pumps. It just pumps. But I mean, I am a big fan of Jerome Tell stuff. You know, his his C C sixty four stuff is amazing. It is it all is. of it. And uh, as far as uh, graphics go, it's nice, big and chunky, you know, good old C64 style, pretty colorful. The graphics kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, Zynapse, uh, another Houston game, at least on the yeah, C64. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's got that kind of look a little bit. Um, I like the big explosions when you blew up things. It seems to be like bigger than the other versions, you know, just like exploded over the whole screen. It's just like super cool. Um, sound effects. Obviously, there weren't any sound effects in there. At least I didn't find an option for that. There's, no, it and any plays it, and any plays music. And uh, yeah, it could have used some sound effects. I mean, to beef it up a bit. Um, I don't think it really affects gameplay though, because that music is so pumping. Um, what else? A lot of a lot of the other things about it are more about just things about the games all generally speaking when i was playing them you know the tama i'm still not a fan of that i wish there wasn't a tama but uh yeah but i get this game doesn't need it It doesn't need it it doesn't really need it it's it's fine without it but anyway you know there was a couple of situations where that i ran out of time which i find really annoying um as as far as the 8-bit versions go though I i found this one to be like one of the hardest ones you yeah. know, it really like it really punishes you. Like you have to be pinpoint in certain parts um, to get through them. And if you the other versions, you can get around it. You know, but the C sixty four one I thought was definitely the hardest out of all the ones. So yeah, but overall, I mean, I really loved this one. Uh, it was the first one I played, but uh, I had nothing to base it on. But I still like had a hell of a time when I used to play this. Cool, cool, Kingy, come on, mate. <laughs> right, yeah, no, this is a this is an incredible version. I'm not <clears> going to take <throat> anything away from it. It's is just as worthy as the original version. Um, it's very fluid. It's slick. It runs very tight. And there is absolutely no slowdown because you 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 know. Oh no, um, there is there is slowdown. I've never noticed any playing it oh. myself personally, but. Yeah, okay. that's fine. If it is, that's fine. Just it's tougher. Maybe I've not. They never got that far on this. <laughs> Just see the, the screens are a lot more busier. Um, right, the song, the tune, but your own tell. Right, I am not taking anything away from that. It's one of the best tunes on the Commodore sixty four ever. Right, it's up there with some of the best, but it does not suit the game. What? That's the point I'm trying to make. It, really? It's mm. right. It's like he has never played the game. He's just, we need a tune, and he's written one of the most incredible tunes ever, but it does not suit the game at all. It doesn't go with it, and it, 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 really, it's like chalk and cheese for me, uh-huh. right? I would rather listen to it on its own than listen to it playing this game, and that's the issue I have. But the original the original tune, right, on the, on the spectrum with Dave Rogers is far more optimistic, chirpy, Infinitely better than a melody. It's like comparing a, a good... But the trouble is that we're talking about a pop song versus Mozart. This is what mm-hmm. I'm on about here, right? Hummable, whistable tune. Uh, you know, you whistle the tune, you hum the tune. It stays in your head. Dave Rogers' tune stays in your head a lot longer than the complex... I mean, this is a complex tune in this. This is an opus in a Commodore version, right? It, it, but it does not go with the game for me. Oh, okay. A great tune, but does not go. Um, there might be people going, you are... But no, personally, it doesn't work for me. You, you, you know why game. I think that's the case? And it's nothing against you personally. I think because that's what you grew up with. with yes, this. And, and yeah. uh, probably the same as yeah. with Brendan and I. It's, that's what, yeah. we, what we're what used yeah. to. Yeah. So, yeah. Both look, of them are absolutely that, fantastic versions. Unbe- unbelievable, both of them. But, and I love that yes. they both use the system's you know audio capabilities to the max. And yes, make, absolutely. It's fantastic. Absolutely, yeah. I mean... Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not insulting the tune itself. Yeah, I, I, I knew. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just, it's just a bit, 
this is a bit strange to me, but yeah, I mean, graphically it's beautiful. The game obviously a bit duller because of the the C sixty four palette. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's, it, it's just alien to me playing it in that way. Even though I played it at my friend's house, it always felt just a bit more alien because the amount of hours I consumed on the Spectrum version. But whichever version you played first, you were onto a winner. No matter if you had the Commodore mm -hmm. or Spectrum, I think there's a in many ways an even keel here. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Uh, cool, cool. Um, myself, like Brendan, it was the one that I well, it was the only one I played growing up. And um it's funny going back to it after playing the Specky version and the Amstrad one and um <clears throat> this is gonna sound strange, maybe. It feels like a different game, even though it's not. It just I, I I love the I love that they're different, and I think the graphics, personally me and and, and not because I'm a C C four fan, but I I prefer the graphics in this version than all the other versions okay. combined. Mm -hmm. Um, it just it just seems so sci fi and alien and bug you know like bugs and it just feels it pops out more for me. Um. <clears throat> And that's not taking anything away from the specy version, which I think is amazing too. Um, I, I just, I just feel that this is just like, and it's going to sound stupid. Just, just another perception of this game from someone else. They've said, okay, we've looked at the specy version. I'm going to reimagine it a little bit and and use it towards the C64's capabilities, which I love. You know what I mean, and, and like they did with the with like with the yeah. Amstrad too. You know what I mean? They didn't just carbon copy; they actually went out there and they pushed and they they made it look gorgeous. I think it's I think it's I love that. I, I love the colors. Yeah. I think <clears throat> I like that dullness because it just to me it feels like it just brings a, a darker a element, grittier, darker yeah. element to the game. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Shame there's no sound effects, but again. Like Brendan said, I don't think it needs it. The music carries the game. I think <laughs> Maybe it not does. I, I do. I think no. it could have done. I mean, I get it. They've used all the channels possible for yeah. that bloody music, right? I get that. <laughs> but I, there's a good. There's a few Commodore games like that over the years where they've went OTT with a fantastic soundtrack and used up every available mm -hmm. bit of space. But mm -hmm. I think what that would be like if it did, if that just had some bullet effects some explosion effects that would be even better. yeah it would, like, yeah it would. it would but you know what i think i think if they had if they added sound effects the music would have been a bit downgraded and i think it would have lost some of its charm maybe mm -hmm. you know what i mean okay. mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it, it's funny because the c64 like you said there's a lot of games where it's either you do music or you play sound effects and it's like and i thought i find the same way with the with the specky it's like you know, some games needed the music. I would have preferred music over the, the something like I could say, dodgy sound effects, like the fart noises. I would have preferred mm -hmm. a nice beeper tune. Get what yeah. I mean? So I think, I don't yeah. know, and again, it comes down to personal taste as well. Okay, um, yeah. I'll go down difficulty. It's, this is tough, man. After playing the Specky mm -hmm. and um, Amstrad versions, it's like, wow, the difficulty's ramped up like crazy. Absolutely, it's it's yeah. nuts. It's, see, it's, see the diff <clears throat> difficult bit as well. Can I add as well? Sorry, yeah. sorry to interject there. That's fine. As 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 my my pet hate on any game that you, especially the Commodore, because you well that one you were able to define keys and use keyboard mm -hmm. on on that one. Thank goodness, because <laughs> using up to work against gravity on a joystick is very difficult. Mm -hmm. on, yeah. on any I mean I'm not a joystick fan and I'll never use a joystick in my life and wow. that's the one thing I no I need hate. I need joystick to do joysticks <laughs> hate them I always like keys you know I mean that's why I'm, thank goodness um, for emulation because then I can map a joystick on, on <laughs> Commodore games to, even though I've got a Commodore right here yeah. with a Kung Fu Flash um, you still use emulation <laughs> yeah I still go back to emulation because I prefer to use keys <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, wow. That's that's straight. That's so alien to me because it's like, I don't know, using a keyboard just seems like you're using a keyboard. You're playing a game. You should be using a keyboard. It's not. I'll do that on PC gaming. No, that's the thing. Yeah, I don't use an yeah. Xbox 360 controller. I use keys. Now, nah, see again. No, nah, I need a, I need a control pad. 
It depends. Unless I'm playing an oh, RTS game. Big girl's blouse. <laughs> 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 yeah, look, if I'm playing like a, you know, Age of Empires or something, yeah, sure, I'll use a keyboard and mouse. But not, not if but I'm playing. What about first-person perspective game? No, 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 no. Keyboard and mouse. You know, you need keyboard and mouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you need that. That's that's a lot better. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and that's today's show. <laughs> now I'm really off track of Cybernoid now on the C64. Sorry, sorry. That's all right. Um, <clears throat> look, overall, um, now now that I've played all the other versions, actually, no, I'll, I'll leave that to the end of the show. Um, <clears throat> I I did go further in this playing it again though because i use the secondary weapons it's a really it's amazing how much it changes the game uh it felt like a new yeah. game is is i felt like a complete bloody idiot but uh <laughs> now nah, this game's just as fun as i remember it <clears throat> just as tough but it's not the toughest i think i think um well, i'll explain later which i think is the toughest version anyway that's me so, where we would like to go next? I'll let you guys choose. Ness? It should be the Ness. Ness, Ness. Ness. Yeah. Ness. Yeah. yeah. All right. Who, who would like to go first with that one? Oh, well, I'll, I'll leave it with you, you two. Oh, I'll go first. Go then. for it. Go for it. Okay, so the Ness one, obviously another one I hadn't played before. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was, uh, <laughs> I don't know what yeah. to say about <laughs> this one. Um, first off, uh, what I did like, it has a difficulty setting, which is interesting. So, you know, you can customize the game to a certain degree. Um, after playing the C64 one, it was, you know, it's a welcome change. <laughs> uh, the music, though, absolutely abysmal. Uh, it's, it's complete garbage. As, you know, you know, I know a lot of people love NES music, but it really gets on my nerves but this was a terrible tune doesn't even like help hold a candle to the other 8-bit ones mm-hmm. tons of sprites tons of sprite flickering as usual you know nes style things come on the screen everything starts flickering it's hard to see what's going on sometimes the sound effects were terrible as usual uh it's <laughs> some of them reminded me of like a 2600 game like just like and a bad 2600 game yeah um the the graphics and everything the presentation felt extremely bland it felt like they'd taken the the other versions of the games which just looked you know really like played to those systems strengths and just like washed it through a washing machine and just took out everything and just left this like skeleton it's just um yeah just even like gameplay everything it just doesn't feel right to me I just, I didn't like this game at all. I just, it feels like a slap in the face to the other 8-bit versions. That's my take yeah. anyway. I'll go next. I totally agree. <laughs> um, it's, you know you know what the levels feel like? It's like, it's like cut and paste. It just, mm-hmm. the colours don't blend. It's like, yeah. on, let's, let's put this green thing here and let's just chuck this, this blue thing here. The Cybernoid ship looks... It's just ugly. The game is ugly. Yeah. It sounds ugly. Um, there's no intro music. Controls are okay. The difficulty, though, is ramped up at the get-go. It's, it's crazy hard. Um, so I did get used to it, and I did make it to the second stage. Um, I like that you can change the secondary weapon with the select button. That's, that, that was positive. Uh, the music was just complete crap. Um, the you know what I found annoying, and a lot of the versions do this, um, when, you, you know how you get close to the edge of the, the screen and enemies just keep coming out? They don't, like, stop. Yeah. Well, I found the NES version, they they just, they, it doesn't give you a chance. Yeah, some parts are just, I found some stages were more unfair than others compared to other versions of the game. Um, and unfair collision detection. I, I just, this, this version, it just feels like it's just rushed just to just to get some coin you know and it's that's that's releasing a, a an s game yep, no worries yeah. bang and it's 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 horrible it's absolutely horrible no no redeeming features whatsoever harsh yeah. no i don't think i'm being harsh it's absolute crap no. yep kingy i thought it was brilliant <laughs> um, you're right. <laughs> no, I, I take your points on board, guys. Yeah, yeah, everything you've said is very much uh, relevant. Uh, I did feel, though, 
it had a bit more of an arcade feel to it, like I had actually put 10 pence into it to play it. There was, some, there was something about it, just, it felt like a coin guzzler. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. It was okay. It's not the worst version I've played, that's for sure. It's not, it's not going to get for back to the old <laughs> arcade... Arcade Perfect and the Golden Turd, it would not be getting that, guys. Um, it's, but yes, it's rushed. It's yeah. There's another system. Let's just get it out now because this is a popular game and that's what it feels like. And it, it's, it doesn't do anything for me by any means. Nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad because <laughs> like, I'm, is it just me? <laughs> Absolutely. It's it's so yeah. Cool. yeah. It's it's garbage. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's go to 16 bits where things don't get any better. Jeez. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Uh, I'll go. Uh, okay, I'll go Atari's Tigers. Let me be very quick. Um, nice intro picture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no music. Well, oh, here, here's the music. That's just great. That's the spaceship flying. Oh, it's Specky tuning an intro, though. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, the title screen. Yeah. I didn't get that. Oh, yeah. very strange. And it's the same. It's just, it's not as good. It's <laughs> crazy. No, yeah, see, that's, I didn't get that. Okay. Maybe it was the ROM I had or something. Yeah. Um, horrible graphics. Game is just stupid hard. This was the hardest one. It was relentless. It was absolutely, mm -hmm. and to be fair though, this was the first version I played reviewing, and um, going oh, back, <laughs> going back, and if I use the secondary weapons because I didn't know you could, I think I would have found it a little bit easier. So you, were, you would have got to screen two then, yeah. Yeah, oh, it's just the, especially the first time when you've got those things that go up and down, those two columns, and then you got that thing shooting oh, yeah. at you at the same time. It's like you need mm -hmm. the shield, and I didn't realise that I could use it. But still, <laughs> I mean, it's just... It's, I mean, come on, you're dodging those, and it's got something else shooting at you. The 8-bit versions didn't have that. Um, I had no fun playing this at all. Houston didn't even try to make this any good. I keep, just keep clear of it. It's it's, it's disgusting. Absolute. Yep. Absolute shite. Is that what you, is that what you would say? <laughs> Kingy? Oh, shite? Shite. 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 It's pish. <laughs> 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 yeah on that segue yeah i'm with you mate it's just ugly they've tried to and it's the same with the mega version they've tried to create this, because of the graphical abilities to mm -hmm. give it a more industrial look they've tried that and failed miserably and the, the tran it's not made the transition from 8 bit to 16 bit at all this you know, the, the sound effects are terrible. They're overwhelming when you're playing the game. You know, they're just nasty sounding to your <laughs> yeah. the, the It just feels like it's running like a slug. It's just, it looks like some of clip art and the graphics. There's, there's, nothing, there's, <laughs> nothing re there's nothing redeemable for it at all. Um, I mean, that was the, the, these were the ones that, yeah... No wonder I avoid... It was weird when I made that transition myself up to the 16-bit systems. I just decided, after maybe a few other games, let's not play the games that were on both systems because you're going to be highly disappointed. You, you, you'll find that much of them are just knee-jerk reactions to popular 8-bit system games and they've not put any love or craft mm -hmm. into them. It's a cheap cash-in and there's no enjoyability and... This is a pinnacle off that for me. It's just ghastly. Shite. 100%. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah, it's... Man, <laughs> this game was absolute garbage. Uh, the sound effects were absolutely grating. That sound effect of your ship flying. Um, it sounds like static on the TV. You know, like... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the just, You're right. Yeah. Oh, man. It just, yeah. it just annoyed me so much. The... Uh, the amount of slowdown is like every, anything that pops on a screen just slows slows it down, which is ridiculous. It shows that they just couldn't have cared less about anything to do with this game. They just they were just pumping it out. Um, 
I was playing it with a joystick. It's it felt like it felt like garbage. Um, it's so inaccurate. You know, you couldn't. It was hard to even like get through even some of the gaps or anything. It was yeah, ridiculous. It was crazy. Um, I hated the uh, graphics. I thought it looked awful. That kind of gray metallic background effect they got going. You know, or the eight bit versions are usually have that black background which I think mm -hmm. suits it. It doesn't like, clash with yeah. anything. You can mm -hmm. see what the hell's going on. But with that metallic, like, gray, which is also an Amiga version, it just it just mashes everything out. You can you can hardly see things when it gets hectic. Never mind the slowdown is destroying everything. But it just looked weird. It actually looked weird. It didn't, like, suit the game. It's like, it's like what you said, like they were trying to go for that kind of industrial look. But mm -hmm. it didn't really... You didn't really have to do that. It seems like they were just doing it because they were trying to upgrade the game. You know, like this is sixteen bit now. We can do more. We can put a metallic background yeah, in there it's, it's so, showing and off. make it cooler. But yeah. no, yeah. it didn't. It didn't. It didn't help. Yeah, this was. Yeah. It's like a kid awful. riding their bike and going, "Look, mum, no hands," and then falling off the bike. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. yeah, absolute trash. That was disappointing. I really thought I was going to get something good out of this. So, all right, last but certainly not least is the Amiga version. Um, who wants to go first with this one? We'll go, 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 go Brendan. You're off the tail, off the tail. Yeah, the so pretty much the same game. Uh, the sound effects are slightly better, but it's still, yeah. <laughs> it's typical of Amiga it gets, though, isn't it? It gets, it gets annoying very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, good old, like, sampled, just sample everything on the Mega, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the graphics, again, it had that metallic look. It just clashed with everything. Uh, there was lots of glitches in the graphics when when gameplay got hectic, when many things came on the screen. Just all sorts of crazy stuff was happening. Um, I didn't notice there wasn't any music in-game. Uh, uh -huh. Was there a title screen with music? No. No. Nope. Not in this one. Yeah, so, okay. Because so I tried two different versions and I didn't find any title music, which is strange. I mean, considering it's Amiga, you would think they would actually bother with some music, but I guess not. <laughs> I guess they were just trying to, you know, throw it out there as quickly as possible. Again, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's the same. It's basically the same game as the ST version. It's just quick money grab trash. Yeah. Mm. I'll, I'll go quickly. Yeah. Um, much like the ST version, but I didn't find it as hard. I think it was just a little bit easier. Um, I just find the 16-bit ports look terrible. No in-bank music. It plays okay, but not the most fun of ports. Look, I think it's a little bit better than the ST. I think it does play a little bit differently on the difficulty side. Um, but, geez, like even just the sound effects, I mean, it just doesn't feel right. It's just just feels ge generic it's like it's like clip art for audio it's like let's just grab these samples and chuck them in there yeah. no thought whatsoever and yeah. uh yeah it's yeah it's quite embarrassing you can you can just tell that early amiga and st games like 80s are just they're not that good you know i think they started doing well probably in 89 for going forward is when they started using that i don't know that 16 bit power properly Especially Ocean, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. I think Houston was more of an eight-bit company. I just don't think they knew how to use sixteen-bit. And once, once, sorry, but once twenty-first century came in, and you know, you've got you know, people dreams, yeah. etc. But these, the ones, I think games that were based on eight-bit just were terrible on on sixteen-bit yeah, yeah. machines. Can you? Yeah, no, yeah, no. I mean, you guys have nailed it all. You really notice the sampled sounds in this. I mean, it's funny going back as, as much as an Amiga enthusiast as I am and loved my Amiga days. Going back to some of those early games, you, you've nailed it, does that it's, it's overkill with what well, at the time high fidelity sampling that did not match the not so high fidelity graphics at that <laughs> point. You know, they're not AGA graphics, they're not. And it just it didn't go. It's like there's no place in this game to have that. And that's why I had actually when when I was coming up to play both and compare the ST to the Amiga, I was thinking I knew this was going to happen with the ST, 
This is going to be sampling over hell, um, um, overload, and the ST is going to win here. <laughs> it didn't either, you know. I had the opportunity to get one up on the Amiga with just using the the sound chips and making effects. Yeah, half yeah. that up completely. Yeah, yeah. There, there is no, in, in truth, in terms of the scales, the tipping scales, there is no viability in any of these two versions whatsoever. It's it's disappointing, eh? It's like... Yes, yeah. it could have been amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, I honestly don't think they look that bad. Um, mm. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't look. I'll, I'll give them that. Look, I think... Look, I, think... I could say that about you, mate. You don't look that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's just I think what bothers me more is is the playability, if anything. I think yeah. just the way it plays yeah. is is, abs- is absolute trash. Yeah, look, like it's not not that pretty, but you know, it does, in the end, it just comes down to um, playability, and they just don't have it. Yeah. I look. All right, let's 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 decide on what was your favorite and what was your least favorite. Guests guest can go first. Obviously, you know my favourite is oh, the course. Spectrum. It's yeah, going of course. To be, yeah, right? yeah. And the mm-hmm. least favourite has to be the ST. Mm-hmm. Okay. Brendan? Yeah, well, just pure nostalgia. The C64, obviously, is my favourite. And the worst one is a toss-up for me is uh, Amiga or ST. You could go either way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they both complete trash. Mm. Um, this is like I have to say. Look, this is this is coming weird. This is weird from me because of the playability wise. Um, nostalgia wise, C sixty four, but I think I enjoyed the specy version the most. All right. Um, it, it's it's hard for me to admit, but it's it just plays. I think it just plays better. I like I like how the sixty four looks, the aesthetics, the sound more, but I think the specy version is just it plays perfectly. There's nothing wrong with it playability wise, and again that's why I think is important. I think I think it just not just a little bit over the C sixty four. So the props to the specy version. Obviously, it's the original. That that me I, I did enjoy that the most. Worst, I'm not going to say ST. I'm going to say NES because that probably enraged me the most. Because, because you know what, I think that could have yeah. did a lot better. That that's that's where I'm disappointed with the most is that that they just could have did a better job. I know they could have did a better job on the ST and Amiga, but it's the NES version looks like they didn't even try. It just that that's it's, no, they put no effort there's into that no one. No effort into that whatsoever. So it, I'd say yeah. that is the worst for me. For me. That's fair enough. I mean, yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, I, I probably agree with that yeah. point, but it's just because I suppose I had more high hopes for the 16-bit versions mm-hmm. and I'm more angrier yeah. and enraged yeah. for that instead, you know. Yeah. The, like, 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 like you said earlier, just there's, there's certain, you're, you're used to certain sloppy things coming out in the nest. Yeah. Like that, you go, yeah, no, you know what I mean? The, the flickery sprites, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the so you just go, oh, well, it's just one of those, you know what I mean? Mm. But for being a fanboy of the, the the home computers, as always was, it's mm. like, that well, should, you yeah. naughty boy, in the corner, you know, in the naughty yeah. step, you should have done better <laughs> with that. <laughs> it's, it's funny, It's I find that a lot of European video games don't translate well to console. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, but... Yeah, that's true. But you do get your exceptions, for example, like Super Drop Zone. That was that worked, mm. you know what I mean. Yeah. So it can be done if you got the right people behind it, and they didn't have mm. the right people behind um, yeah. Cybernoid mm. whatsoever. It's it's a shame. No. So even like I've played the Dizzies on the console versions, and they don't feel the yeah. same. They just don't. Nah. They you just know. lack personality. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's always not there, is it? It's nah. just, it's just taken yeah. away. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just strange. It's like. It mm-hmm. shouldn't feel different, but it does. Even mm-hmm. the Amiga versions, mm-hmm. I think, to me, like, I know we're going sidetracked here, but, like, for example, I think the Dizzy, yeah. the, the, the Dizzy um, games belong on 8-bits. Yeah. That's the way I, oh, yeah. I yeah. Really agree with my opinion. Yeah. 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 It's just, they just don't work sometimes just on other more powerful systems or consoles. 
mm-hmm. quite strange. But then, yeah. but then you can get console games that work well on computers. It's just, it's, I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit biased because I like my vintage computers. I don't know, but anyway, that's probably for another mm. discussion elsewhere. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Well, that's it. So um, wow, that's that's nearly an hour already, guys. Well done. Wow, that was sure? that was a lot of fun. And thanks, thanks for joining us. Can you, you got any shout outs, mate? You got anything coming you up? Guys. Just give you, you know, yeah, we've got the latest episode coming out ourselves for RGDS podcast. Um, we're covering, would you believe, um, compilations, you know, nice. so the old cassette compilations nice. back <laughs> in the day. So um, all, your, all your big hits, you know, all the famous ones. So we've done that on the Discord chat channel and let the listeners did do a vote. So I've included their collections and that. So I'm, well, I should have been editing it tonight, but I'm with you guys. So <laughs> I better do it tomorrow morning and get it out there. So. I'll get on with that. So, yeah, so um, that's coming out soon. So, you know, hi to the guys from the team. And, um, yeah, just stay tuned to that. It'll be out soon, my fuse. Cool, cool. Awesome. But, no, thanks for having me, guys. Pleasure joining you in this um, new adventure. This is, I mean, a fan anyway, listen to it. And um, it's good to be part of it. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah. yeah, really appreciate you being on. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, yeah, we're looking forward definitely. to having uh, more guests on in the future, and, mm-hmm. and 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 like and like we had an RK Perfect. I think I think it adds a nice little dimension to to the show as well to get an external view. Yeah. And um, who, who, who mean, else? Who else to pick for the first episode with a guest? This is king. <laughs> <laughs> I know sometimes when you choose too many people, everyone just reiterates the same point. Uh-huh. You know, you can only cover so much, and it sounds repetitive or mm-hmm. or whatever, yeah. whatever else. But no, it was it was it was really good fun fun being on with you guys as late as it is or early as it is for you chaps. Um, but no, that was and plus a, a very special game to dear to my heart anyway. So that's that's a great way to to join you you guys with it. It's brilliant. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that works for us, all us three, because it, it is a yeah. game close to our hearts. So, yeah. yeah. And by the way, it was 1987, not 1988, just to add to your factual incorrectness. I did say 87. You, no, you didn't. You said 88. Did I? Um, uh, oh, well, we're going to have to listen back. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I'm waiting you up. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, bastard. I just want to sort the seeds up down there. Yeah, yeah. He, li- he likes to wind me up. <laughs> oh, I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we wind ourselves up. We wind each other up all the time. Don't worry about that. Uh, how can I say? It's not, it won't be a PG rating. It doesn't. It gets pretty intense. <laughs> 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 yeah, and, I behaved tonight. Yeah, you've you done very well, Kingy. <laughs> Brendan, he, he's done well. He deserves a medal, I can tell you. I can, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a, a, a Scott that's been drinking on a podcast can get really messy sometimes. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm fine. You're fine. You do. Look, he's not, not flushed or anything. He looks great. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Okay. Drink some more when I go off. So. <laughs> Uh, shout out to um, Gary Arnett, who helps us with our um, display picks for our podcast. Thank you for that. Uh, shout out to Jerome Tell for letting us use his Cybernoise 2 music for the show. Uh, shout out to Louis from Retro Gaming Nation as well for his great content. Also, uh, Reset64. Awesome C64 news there as well. And with that... I well, hope you enjoyed the show. Remember to also tune in to Brendan's channel. Uh, C- uh, 664K. Oh, I always say C64 because I'm used to C behind the 64. Oh, no. It's C- 64K. Do you have anything coming up, dude? Let, let everyone know. Um, yeah, so I've, I've got a massive documentary coming out. It's only going to be out next month. It's at the complete history of arcade games. I know it sounds ridiculous, the complete That's history, epic. but <laughs> it's epic. Um, I'm about, I'm up to 1983 at the moment. I started in 1970. Oh, wow. So, um, and I also went back even before that, but the bulk of it is 70 to 99. So it's, uh, I'm covering like, everything, like literally plus the kitchen sink so it's <laughs> wow. it's it's gonna be massive and i'm 
anyway, that's going to be out next month. I'm not actually even making any other videos next month. That's going to be the only one. Oh, so full time, you, straight on that. You, yeah, I'm, I'm putting full time into it. So look out for that coming soon. Awesome, man. Awesome. <laughs> Now, what I've got in the future, I do nothing else. <laughs> just, <laughs> you, can, you can get me on Twitch if you like. Uh, so, yeah, I'm on Twitch. Just just look for Dad. You're baking bread. That's baking what you're bread doing. And, and playing um, Street Fighter at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, finish I've, it. I've, I've, I've got to finish a, a one game of Street Fighter, one credit before my um, bread grows due to the, the proving process. So... Jeez, I'm, I'm rambling on like absolute crap. But, <laughs> and with that, thanks, uh, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye.